Hello, everyone. Welcome to Free Write Friday. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jessica Lynn Johnson, and I am the founder of Soaring Solo Studios, which is a company dedicated to developing, directing, and producing one-person plays all around the world. And I have the joy of working alongside my colleague, award-winning uh, solo theater instructor and director, Heather Dowling. Um, together, we work with clients all over the world. And um, I personally have been in this field for over 20 years. Um, I have a couple of solo shows myself. Um, and I've worked with uh, directing and developing over 150 solo shows at this point and have worked with hundreds of solo artists. So it's my passion. It's what I love to do. And um, I'm also on the advisory board with the Los Angeles Women's Theater Festival. So if you haven't heard of us, we've been around for about 30 years and uh, you can find us at lawtf.org. And um, I'm also a blogger for NoHo Arts. So I write a blog called Soaring Solo, which has a bunch of tips for solo theater artists. So be sure to check that out. And yeah, that's a little bit about me. So I'd love to hear from you in the chat. Please feel free to say hello and uh, where you're at in your own solo theater journey or anything in your solo theater world that you'd like to brag about or talk about. I'm, I'm here for it. So feel free to put that in the chat. And um, the mission of Free Write Friday is just to create a, a space of accountability and support and progress um, on your, your solo theater goals and to specifically be looking at uh, writing and structuring your, your solo shows. Um, so we're not really focused on um, staging or technique or things like that in Free Write Friday. It's really about the writing process. Um, and if you enjoy today and you want to come back, the next Free Write Friday is happening uh, Friday, December 1st. So Friday, December 1st at 10 a.m. Pacific, noon Central, 1 p.m. Eastern. And if you can't make it, no big deal. I record all of these and they all go directly on my YouTube channel. So you can find me on YouTube and watch it back there. Okay, so uh, just make sure you have something to write with or write on or a, a smart device to use, one or the other. Um, and I am just going to go go on, jump right in. So we've been looking at uh, Save the Cat for a while now. Save the Cat is a uh, book by Blake Snyder, which um, is about writing screenplays. Actually, it's his, his screenplay structure, but I'm looking at it through the lens of uh, being a solo artist. So we are really uh, getting toward the end of looking at that structure. But if you're just popping in today for the first time, don't worry, all of these are standalone um, and hopefully you'll get something from it, even if it's your first time and you're joining us late. So um, the end of uh, the finale that Blake talks about in Save the Cat is five points. And the point that we're looking at right now is point number two, which is called executing the plan. Um, so this is the point in the story where the hero um, has their plan. They know what to do. They've done the research. They've had the epiphany of the answer. And this is now we're executing that plan or we're taking the first step of executing that plan. So I will give you a tangible example from one of our Soaring Solo shows, um, which is actually happening tomorrow at the White Fire Theater. Um, it's called Naturally Tan by Tanya Thomas. And in Naturally Tan, uh, Tanya deals with, um, I would say, body dysmorphia. And essentially just she she's not uh, accepting of her her voluptuous figure, her brown skin um, and, and various other things about her, her physical body um, in this world. And that's kind of the, the nature of the show is is her grappling with that. So toward the end of the show, um, when we reach the finale stage, as Blake Snyder would talk about it. Um, she she has that epiphany. She realized that a lot of the, the the problems in her life center around her inability to accept herself in the flesh, like who she is in her body and to really find herself perfect just the way she is, beautiful just the way she is. So when she's had that epiphany, um, she she realizes that to execute the plan of of loving her body, um, she needs to be an example for her daughters. And so uh, her plan is to take her daughter to the beach and um, really put this into action, just really loving their bodies and um, accepting themselves as perfect. So there's a scene 
um, at the end, toward the end of the show, where I would call that her executing the plan, where she goes to the beach with her daughter Nikita, and um, and they're taught, and she has her daughter start to say affirmations about, you know, I am, I am beautiful, I am perfect, um, just the way I am, and start to really accept her body and and her beauty just the way that she is so that's that's all that it is that's all that this uh simple moment in the show is it's a step toward executing the plan so for you i want you to think about your own life and um think about a moment where <clears throat> you've had that epiphany of of what needs to change you've um done some preparation even for what needs to change but then what was that first step in executing that plan so for example, you may have the epiphany, I need to leave my marriage. I need to get a divorce. You, you have that epiphany. So then you start to research all of the uh, things that go into legally separating and divorcing from someone. And then the um, execution of that plan might be calling the divorce lawyer or might be actually having the conversation with the spouse you want to leave. Um, or you might have the epiphany that you need to change careers and um, so you're researching different jobs while maintaining your, your current job. And the executing of that plan might be um, picking up the phone to quit. Um, it might be calling that, that job that's a better fit for you and initiating um, that conversation about getting an interview. So those are just some examples. So I want you to take, um, I'm going to set my timer for eight minutes, and I want you to just write about a moment in your life where you were executing the plan, as Blake Snyder says. You had the epiphany, you've done the prep, and now you're executing the plan. What's that first step? So don't overthink it. Um, and certainly if this is, if, it, if what's coming up for you feels like, oh, this isn't exactly what I thought I was going to write about in my solo show, but something's coming up for me. Don't, don't worry about that. Just write what's coming up for you. You can always change it later or apply this uh, structure point later. Um, but just go with what's coming up for you now and try not to overthink it. If you have any questions for me, just go ahead and um, private message me in the chat and I'll be happy to answer. And I will let you know when your eight minutes are up.
just under a minute left. Okay, please go ahead and wrap up your writing. So a takeaway that I want <clears throat> to leave with you from, from what we just looked at um, is I really appreciate how Blake um, takes the finale and, and breaks it down into these five points, um, these five beats. I think it really honors specificity um, and stages that we go through as human beings. And I think all too often solo artists think, I've got to be general. If I get too specific, then people won't relate to me or, you know, it's too personal. So I'm going to speak in general terms um, or skip steps and not, and, you know, not be specific or nuanced. And I couldn't disagree more. You want to be very, very specific and trust that your audience will find themselves in your story. Um, I know when I performed uh, my solo show Z, you know, it's about a, a woman named Tessa who is a fundamentalist Christian who falls in love with her transgender best friend. And I had a woman who came up to me after the show and she's like, I don't know anyone who's transgender. I am not religious in any way, shape or form. And she's like, but I feel so, I related so much to the story because she's like, for me, ultimately it was just a love story. And it made me think of these other great loves in my own life. And so I use that for an example, just to remember, as you're telling your stories, be really specific, trust that the audience will find their way into it. And when you're wrapping up your story, the finale, that's the most important time to be really specific, because now you're paying off, you know, the hour that the audience just sat through listening to this journey. So you really want to be rich with your details um, and, and break that down. Um, because they're there to get to know you better. They're there to be inspired by you, learn from you, connect with you. So as you look at the the end, the finale of your show, don't be afraid to get specific. Don't be afraid to say too much, to unpack all those details of how the story wraps up. And I often say, like, do not invite editor into the room with the writer. Um, let the writer just write and write and say too much. And then when you're like, okay, now I need to whittle this thing down. I need to kill some darlings. Then you can say, okay, editor, you're you're welcome to come in now. And now we can really fine, fine tune this and figure out what's the most important. But in, in your writing process, when you're in generative mode, don't let the editor near your, your keyboard or your pencil or whatever, um, because it will block you. It will definitely block you. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'm gonna roll through some quick announcements. We have a lot happening um, in the Soaring Solo community and I put them in the chat as well. So feel free um, to uh, jot down the announcements. Um, and I think most of this, if not all of it's on my website as well. But uh, the art of creating the one person play, uh, my free class that I've been teaching for over a decade, um, that is happening on Saturday, December 2nd at 10 a.m. Pacific, noon Central, and 1 p.m. Eastern. It's a 90-minute free class, and you can sign up under free stuff on my website. Um, and if you're ever curious about working with me um, or Heather in a more professional capacity um, and book a consultation, um, those are discounted at $69 for the hour on Zoom. So you can email me at soaringsoloartist at gmail.com or just fill out one of our contact forms on the website. No pressure with that. Just letting you know it is there if you need the additional support. Um, and Heather and I also host uh, what we call the Revealed virtual reading series. We've been, we've been doing that for a few years now. And it just enables solo artists to read a work in progress, to read their script um, virtually in front of a virtual audience and get feedback at the end of that. We talk about what was working, what wasn't working, ideas for enhancement, um, edits, uh, expansions, things like that. So um, if you're interested in being a part of Revealed, you can email me about that as well. It's just an ongoing series. And we, we try and find a time in both of our schedules that 
uh, that work and, and uh, we produce it through Soaring Solo. Um, and then the next Free Write Friday, um, I said this at the beginning, but I'll say it again, is happening Friday, December 1st at 10 a.m., uh, noon Central and 1 p.m. Eastern. So just RSVP the same way you did today. And um, I also put a bunch of festivals in the in the chat as well. I'm a huge believer in getting involved with the festival circuit. I think it's a great way to um, build up your resume as a solo artist, get reviewed, um, meet community who are like-minded and like-missioned and you know, just really build your creative community support system and get reviews and accolades and, and all the good stuff that festivals uh, provide in addition to um, the fact that most festivals have really great structure and deadlines and things to help handhold you through the process of producing um, a solo show. So um, look into the Binge Fringe Festival, United Solo, Orlando Fringe, Hollywood Fringe, uh, Joshua Tree Solo Festival, LA Women's Theater Festival, the Soaring Solo Stars Series. Those are a few. And I put in the um, chat the link to the SoaringSoloStudios.com events page. So you can, I think we have about 14 shows coming up right now in the community that are a part of different festivals, primarily um, Binge and the Stars Series. So see stuff, especially if it's live streaming, even if you're not in the Los Angeles area, if you can catch any live streams. Um, this weekend, um, Tanya Thomas is performing Naturally Tan tomorrow. Um, Anzu Lawson is performing The Rub. Um, she's doing that. And I think Anzu is live streaming. Tanya, I don't think is, but Anzu is. So you can go to my website for those details. And um, they're both free shows. And then um, Sunday, Melia Mills is performing The Allure of Thug Life. I don't think she's live streaming, um, but if you're local in LA, that show is free as well. Um, so just go to my events page, see what's coming up and whatever you can live stream or go to in person. It's a great way to learn. It's a great way to support and, um, and build your, your creative community. All right. Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, pop me an email and uh, I hope you have a fabulous weekend.